and all the while the words of Mordecai circling around and around in her mind, for such a time as this. The freedom of her people teetering on Week five, Color Cube Bible Challenge. Woo, let's go. Today's color. All right, no peeking. Do, 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 do. All right, how about you? Oh, yes! <laughs> okay, I'm so stoked right now. Green is my favorite color. This is gonna be awesome. All right, let me read them. We've got white smoke, lime, light green, Kelly green, and forest green. Yes, oh man, I am really excited about these. And today's Bible verse. Ooh. All right, all right. <laughs> Esther 414. Woo! Okay, I'm actually so excited right now. What? We got greens, we got Esther 414. Let's get painting. Esther 414. For if you keep silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I approached this painting a little differently this week, jumping in without any clear vision of what I wanted to paint. I threw on some worship music and just kept praying over the verse and letting the Lord guide my painting. I thought it would be fun to use this sponge brush and had a few ideas in mind, but none of them really felt right. They didn't quite line up with the entire context around this verse. Now, I thought mixing the colors wouldn't be so hard since they were all in the green family but I was quickly humbled. <laughs> Kelly green is officially the hardest color I've ever had to mix, <laughs> but eventually we got there. I filled the canvas with these fun green spongy splotches and I realized I hated it. <laughs> well, hate is a strong word. It just didn't feel right. So I went in with a two inch brush and just created a smoother textured background, blending all the greens together. I was really happy with this look, but now I needed it to tell a story. The more I worshiped and prayed, the more I knew I would have to face what I was avoiding, which actually was a face. <laughs> I don't like drawing people, painting people. I just don't feel skilled in that area, but I really felt like that's what this painting was calling for. So I got some inspiration from some minimalist face drawings I looked up online and decided to go with this minimalistic outline of a face. And as soon as I started laying the paint down, the rest of the image started to come together in my mind. Now that I had accepted I was drawing a person I could really let it flow. Imagine being Esther, a Jewish woman who happened to win the favor of the king and become queen. Her identity as a Jew a secret. Then this decree comes out and her uncle is urging her to talk to the king. She's afraid because she knows that any who come before the king without being called on are to be put to death. Yet her uncle urges her, whether or not you go to him, like death is here. God will bring deliverance from elsewhere if not from you. But perhaps this is the very reason you were put in this position. She had to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to keep playing it safe and just hope that somehow things get resolved? Or do I take the risk, risk of death at coming before the king and also reveal the truth of who I am and that my people are about to be destroyed by a decree the king agreed to? Can you imagine the weight Esther felt? The responsibility? That's what I wanted to depict here in her face. The sense of urgency to save her people. The wrestling with the possibility of facing punishment of the king or the consequences of not doing anything at all. Her life was on the line through either choice. And all the while the words of Mordecai circling around and around in her mind. For such a time as this the freedom of her people teetering on her very decision. She stepped into it, seeking God's help and fasting and praying for three days before going before the king. And her bravery led to the deliverance of her people. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like the Lord had brought you there for that specific time? Did you feel him pressing upon your heart to do something? Maybe talk to a stranger or to meet a big need for someone you hardly knew? To speak a timely word of encouragement or even correction to someone in your life? It's hardly the same as what Esther went through, but one memory that comes to mind of a time I felt this way was when I was living in Costa Rica. 
To set the stage here, I had first gone to Costa Rica for a 10 day mission trip teaching music in churches, and it was just such an incredible and impactful experience that I could feel the Lord doing something in my heart and this feeling that I was supposed to be there. When I got back, I could not shake this. I kept praying into it and felt the Lord calling me to move out there. I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> but I bought a one way ticket and through prayer and counsel, all the pieces began to come together. I ended up at this school where I was able to live with a local family and learn the language. In my mind, I thought I had the whole plan for why God was calling me out there figured out. But the things I thought I'd be getting involved in kept turning into obstacles and closed doors. So I just kept focusing on my studies. So here I am, it's second semester, and the teacher of my language class one day casually brought up how she had this song in her head, but she wasn't musical and had no idea how to put it to music. At this point in time, no one really knew the full extent of my musical abilities, just that I had helped with worship on campus, but they didn't know that my college degree was in music theory and composition. So I kind of logged it away, didn't say anything, but I remember feeling a little tug, like, hey, you could do that for her. The days kept passing and became weeks, and class continued on, and we kept growing in our ability to speak Spanish. It was very stressful and hard work, but also so fun. Living in a home of only Spanish speakers was also very tiring at times, and I often felt overwhelmed between school and homework, not having my own space like I did back at home, and at that time being one of the only people doing worship every week, and on top of it all, going through my own emotions and testing in my faith. It just felt like a lot. It could have been really easy to just ignore that tug in my heart and to think someone else will come along and help her one day. I'm just too busy and overwhelmed, but I couldn't shake it. So one day I talked with her after class was over. I told her that I studied composition and had written many songs and that I would like to try to help her if I could. She was ecstatic. She said she had been waiting 10 years for the right student and that when she found out I was a musician, she had a feeling it was going to be me, but didn't want to overstep and ask. There are several things I can think of for why God brought me to Costa Rica that weren't anything I had planned on, but this is one of the biggest. This woman had waited 10 years for someone to help her, and God brought me along all the while my head in the clouds for some other plan. When he knew he was about to bless this woman with one of her greatest dreams, I was able to compose the music for her lyrics and we performed it at the graduation ceremony with all the other teachers singing with her. It was such a cool and meaningful experience and it felt like a moment where God had brought me there for such a time as this. We never know how God may be waiting to work through us to be a blessing to someone else. Whether it's a massive deliverance like we saw in Esther's case, or a small act of kindness that could make a world of a difference in one person's life. Esther's courage and resolve to step up to what was being asked of her reminds us that no matter what may be in front of us, if God is calling us into it, being obedient will bring forth the most beautiful victories. Obedience may feel costly and risky, but when we embrace it, it leads to freedom and opens the door for us to be a blessing to others and experience the joy of God's beautifully orchestrated timing. To see the other paintings I've done in this challenge, as well as other creative videos that help deepen your faith and relationship with God, check out these next. This has been KO, here with you to create eternal perspective.